Matt, how you doing, dude? How's your weekend? I'm good. Uh, things are good. Uh, you know, still just trying to survive in quarantine life and, uh, yeah, things, things are good. Yeah. The wife's back at work. Yeah. So, you know, we're just, just, uh, make, making, making life happen. I hear you. We are, um, we're trying to make sure our childcare is squared away mm. and, uh, and as of yet it is not. So gotcha. we have to figure that out. Um, yep. Uh, oh, I gotta get this thing out of the way. Whoops. Um, funny story. So our, we're, I had a little moment tonight with my son upstairs, my older son, I'm up there mm. and we're waiting for my daughter to get ready for bed. And, um, and she, uh, uh, so she's downstairs, and uh, so my son is smushing my cheeks together like this. You know, he mm-hmm. likes to do that. And so I start talking like James Stewart. I start going, <laughs> Mary, Mary, this is his petals, Mary. And, um, and so he, he keeps pushing my cheeks and then unclenching them uh, mm-hmm. as I talk. So I go from like, you know, old Jimmy Stewart to like, you know, really young Jimmy Stewart. Like, young Jimmy Mary, Stewart, yeah. Mary, this is his petals. <laughs> So I'm going back and forth and he keeps like shoving my head up a little bit to where like my neck is snapping back and I'm I'm like, Hey, you need to stop, you know? And so he does that for a good little bit. He's laughing. He loves it. Mm -hmm. He finishes doing it. And so I'm, I'm telling my wife this story at this point, you know, um, you know, and so, uh, you know, the three of us are over in the bedroom before I sat down to do this. And so I was telling her the story. I was like, Hey, he kept put, you know, he kept, uh, he kept pushing my head up and everything and he kept really testing my limit, but I was just sort of trying to keep it playful. And then the last time he did it, he sort of like finally like, you know, stopped and like, you know, kind of fell over into my arms. and was like, you're my hero, daddy. And I was like, <laughs> Oh buddy, you're my hero right. too. And as soon as I told that part of the story, my Oliver went <laughs> and threw up on the bed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm my own hero. <laughs> You're just like, boo. <laughs> oh, are you having a touching moment here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Does this involve me? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's awesome. Now he smells Perfect timing. awful and I have to, he has to sit in with me tonight. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, uh, dude's got great comedic timing already. He does. That's exactly what my wife said. My kids have <laughs> my kids. All three of them have a really good comedic timing. Uh, they always awesome. have. My daughter is is my daughter's pretty funny. Um, my son's mm-hmm. really funny. This one's pretty funny. So they all have really good timing. Uh, so they've they've inherited the old <laughs> the old Dempsey uh, comedic <laughs> gene there. <laughs> yep. um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> That's all. Awesome. Yeah, he will be. He will be the the third of my children still to to be immortalized in the podcast. Did you just? He just threw up again on my hand. <laughs> uh, to be immortalized uh, <laughs> on on the podcast. Yes. Uh, so I don't know That's how awesome. to unroll this. Uh, all right, this is great. So good thing the podcast is not in smell of vision because uh, you'd be be, be smelling Ooh. some horrible. Uh, yeah, I'm, horrible I'm, I'm okay. I'm stench. Um, <laughs> it's not in smell of vision. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> do you remember when Nickelodeon did that? I, I remember hearing about it. I don't know that I remember it being a thing. So, so they did it. It was like, I don't know if it was more than once, but I remember it once. Cause you remember they used to have Nick magazine yeah. and, and I remember buying this particular issue because they had like a, if I, I could be misremembering the details, but, but essentially they had like a tear out in, in the magazine that was a scratch and sniff. Okay. So that, like you buy the magazine, you take it home, you watch TV. And so like rocket power or Hey Arnold is on and like a little icon comes up at the bottom of the screen. And then you find the corresponding icon, scratch it and sniff it. And like, so that was, that was smell of vision. So it'd be like, I don't know, dill pickles throws up or whatever. And then you do like this and it smells like bananas. Right. <laughs> okay. And, and so like, that's what it was. Gross. And, uh, yeah, it was, it, I remember, I, I remember it happening once. <laughs> Well, I don't remember happening more than once. <laughs> the the metrics on that came back overwhelmingly negative. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. We can't do this. This is dog. People are people are throwing up before dinner, and kids are kids aren't eating. The parents are complaining. They're probably just like the, the amount of man hours it took to like search through the catalog, <laughs> find episodes with good smell moments, yeah. then you know find the corresponding thing, create the flavor cards, all of that. They're just like, nah, I, I don't know. Make a, a, a banana deodorant and put it on a car. Yes, basically. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's like, so now we have nothing to show for this except a, a, the world's strangest patent for for, Correct. for being banana deodorant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for the man who wants to smell like a nanner. <laughs> and the monkeys want the nanners. Oh, everybody gets what they want. Everybody gets what they want. Poor. I told you I watched that with my kids. Like, I, actually, this had to be like a year ago at this point, but we watched yeah. that recently, and that was yeah. still messed up. I haven't seen it since college, probably. Oh, and man. then I, I think, um, I think they're all on Netflix right now. They are. But, yeah. Uh, now the Nickelodeon is like Netflix's big saving grace right now in terms of properties it's retaining because everything yeah. else is just flying. All Disney's all leaving, and you know, yep. all these Fox properties are leaving, and all these other yep. you know, NBC stuffs all leaving, and they're like, oh shit, what are we gonna do? And yep. Nickelodeon's like, we'll save you, you. and they're like, yay. I okay. Mean, uh, uh, yeah. All right. Why can't we have your good shows? <laughs> you know, you remember that part in Guardians Two where they's like, uh, I can't remember what they're talking about. Taser Face is making promises, and the one guy, the one big like Southern guy with the goggles, is like, okay, <laughs> okay, like, yeah. <laughs> halfway through, yeah. That's how yep. I felt. Like, oh, okay, yep. okay, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, they did actually. Um, signed some sort of exclusive with Nickelodeon a while back. Um, an Netflix, exclusive. An exclusive. Uh, and, and it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was like for like the back catalog. It's for upcoming like specials. The front catalog. The front catalog. And so it's like, um, in fact, I guess I could talk about this uh, very briefly tonight. Uh, hey Arnold Jungle Movie which was uh, released a couple years ago. And then like a new Rocco's Modern Life came out last year, I mm -hmm. think. And then they're doing like a new Invader Zim. And um, so it's like these new specials or whatever. Um, huh. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, um, and Rugrats is supposed to come back. I just I haven't heard anything about that lately. This is weird. All this is weird. It's weird. Like, it's weird that there's. Like, uh, I don't have a problem with it on a personal level, but to me, creatively, yeah. it's just weird. It, it's, it, we know it goes back to the same conversation every time. Like, this is cool because we liked it, but like, my kids have no concept of what like a, like a good original idea is, you know? Right. Yep. Exactly. Um, well on that melancholy note, um, I'd like to talk about, the, about the giant mechanical man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm having a hard time right now, Jill. I just need a place to stay for a while. We're on your team. Your team, Janice. Team that pays their bills. Why'd you choose to start doing this uh, robot thing? I feel like modern life can be alienating. It can be like you're mindlessly walking through it like a robot. I guess I just want people to know that they're not crazy. I mean, life is crazy, right? Good morning, Janice. So the giant mechanical man uh, was written and directed by Lee Kirk. Uh, it stars Jenna Fisher, Chris Messina, Topher Grace, uh, Rich Summer is in here. Uh, Malin Ackerman, remember her? She's mm -hmm. in here. Um, remember her? <laughs> um, Accurate. And it was released in 2012. Um, so uh, it's currently on Amazon Prime, which is where I saw it. But you can get it like on Roku, uh, Hoopla, actually, my little my little library app. Not mine, obviously. I'd be a millionaire. Um, the 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 app I didn't think anyone had heard of, Hoopla. The library app's got it. So if you have a library, I've never card, heard of that. Hoopla. Hoopla. Man. I've never heard of that. This podcast is brought to you by Hoopla, the That'd app. That'd be a great sponsor, dude. The app who, uh, hoop, Hoopla, uh, yo, that would be, whoa, I just thought about that. Wow. That'd be a great sponsor. We need to partner with them. This whole time I wasn't thinking about the irony of, of the namesake <laughs> of that. Interesting. Yes. Now, Hoopla is, oh man, my hand is slimy as shit. It's <laughs> just <laughs> rubbing vomit all over my hand. And to everyone who's just tuning in. <laughs> oh man, it's so, it's gross. It's all shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad it's below frame. I think people would turn the video off. Um, Hoopla is an app that's like that's that's um, through your library. 
So your, your library might have a partnership with it to where all you gotta do is have your card, and that's how you can you can get um, like ten or twelve audiobooks a month, like or digital checkout. So you can get eBooks through there. You can really? get um, uh, audiobooks um, and some movies, but it is hit and miss, and you can always find those movies elsewhere for free. It's never like oh, Hoopla's got some exclusive. It's always it's just for people who don't want to pay for Netflix or a bunch of other things. It's like everything mm-hmm. I found on hoopla for movies has always been on like, um, uh, God, what's that one? It starts with a K. It's another library f- one for free. I don't remember. Canopy, canopy, canopy. Um, anyways, you know, hit and miss, but uh, I like sure. it, especially for audiobooks. Okay. Um, so the giant mechanical man is on all those channels. Um, I, <laughs> I have a typo here. The Gant mechanical man. <laughs> um, <laughs> The Giant Mechanical Man um, came out in 2012, and I was aware of it. I've been aware of it since it came out because of because of Jenna Fisher being the the, the star. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, I heard about it as you know, the Office is you know at, the, at its height, and um, yeah. uh, but at the time, especially, I wasn't as receptive to small you know small scale indie dramas, you know. Which, sure. which is what this is. Um, and then uh, I, I've been listening to Office Ladies. I've been rewatching The Office or whatever. And then the other day she had posted like, hey, the Jabba Mechanical Man is now on Amazon Prime. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. should I go ahead and give that a shot? Where is where is my headphone looped? It's looped over here somewhere. Um, so I decided I'd give it a try. And, um, and uh, I enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's, a sweet little movie. Um, it's Ooh. about a um, the, the 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 titular character is played by Chris Messina. He's a uh, he's one of those big, um, you know, s- uh, silver painted people in suits and stilts who walks you know down the streets in New York, and he's a you know a street artist. Um, you know, stands there perfectly still. He moves if you pay him, and it's and for him, it's like his calling. It's what he's good at, or he believes that's like his talent. Um, Hmm. and it, it reminds people, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's on a, on a, on a, you know, on a philosophical level, it's about being stuck and being a robot in like society or whatever, like stuck in a job you hate or stuck in a pattern of life you don't, you're not into, or, um, and you're just like a robot. You're just, you're doing everything automatic. That's his philosophy behind it. Um, but he does it to, to bring joy, right? Sure. Jenna Fisher uh, plays Janice, uh, who is a similarly um, aloof, but, you know, Tim can't hold, you know, doesn't have like a real job or anything and it's Mm -hmm. affecting his relationships. And uh, Janice is similarly afloat and um, trying to find purpose and trying to find a passion in life and she isn't finding it. And at some point these two meet up and um, strike up a relationship and uh, the film is about kind of uh, that slow coming together. Um, and, uh, and yeah, but you know, again, since it's like a, such an, like an indie type thing, it's not like a boy meets girl, boy, likes girl, boy loses girl type of thing. It's not one of those, there's no grand the romantic numbers. gesture or anything like that. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's two people figuring, figuring out life at about the same time. Um, sure. And it's just a, it's a sweet little movie. Um, so, awesome. um, I gave this, I believe, yeah, I gave it three and a half stars. Um, okay. I, I didn't, it's, it's not one of those things like I loved enough to give it like a four, you know, but yeah. I really enjoyed watching it. It's just one of those, yeah. something about Jenna Fisher in particular and everybody in the cast of the office is they, they have such pleasant sounding voices. Mm-hmm. Um, so especially if you have a slow contemplative, not even slow, this is not a slow film. If you have a contemplative film like this that takes its time with pacing um, and oh my God, now he's pooping. Oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, if you have a film like that, um, it's, it's, if it's done right, it's, it's a, it's not a chore to watch. It's, it's just pleasant. It's, it's like yeah. a nice thing to, to be experiencing Really yeah. simple, sweet story about authenticity. Um, I think the music in particular is really great. They have a lot of, um, I'm sure some of it's the score, but the score and the licensed music, if they are both equa present in the movie, um, mm-hmm. are pretty seamless to me, except for when people are singing and then you can like really, you know, it's obviously a, a song, but um, I think the music really helps carry the quieter, 
the meadows of the film a little bit more. Um, yeah. And uh, it's just a sweet little film. I would recommend people see it. It's it's it's. I think some indie. I think when people think indie films, they think experimental. Yeah. They think um, this is a weird f- movie about nothing, and um, I'm not interested. And it's right. it's not about nothing. It not a lot happens, but it's about something. It's about sure. It's a it's about um, resisting being pretentious, or you know. The the uh, what happens when you you pretend like you've got life figured out and you don't um, and how it's yeah. okay to not have a plan to an extent I guess or to to yeah. not have um, a big lofty goal like other people do or whatever so, sure and, and I feel like sometimes you, I want to tap into like was that like the was that the emotional zeitgeist of twenty twelve was it pressure to have a plan. You know, you see, you see indie films, especially in the time and place they're made. And you think, what was the, what were the social pressures of the time this was made? Right. Right. Um, I, it, it wasn't that long ago, but I don't, I don't, I'm not aware enough to remember what it was like at that point, yeah. you know? Yeah. I don't know. Um, we were at a different point in our lives than yeah. these characters probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lee Kirk, the writer director is now Jenna Fisher's husband. Um, yes. So uh, I guess they met through this film, and I think he, and he directed, appears on one episode of The Office. He directed one episode of The Office. What is, is it the same episode he? he appears in? And uh, I'm not sure what I, episode does he direct. I knew this earlier, and I don't anymore. <laughs> okay, he he appears in the episode The Delivery. I think it's part two. Okay, it's not that one. Who is he in The Delivery? He, he's the the lactation con- consultant that comes in and teaches. Is he really? Pam. Yeah, he teaches Pam how to get the baby to latch. That's so weird. And Jim and Jim is like really uncomfortable by the whole thing. <laughs> it's it, it's hilarious. It's one of my favorite parts in the whole episode. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's the giant mechanical man. Yeah. I'm about half. I'd say a third of the way through season seven or eight, eight of the Office. Whatever. What's the okay. second to last one? The first, second to the, last the first eight. full one without Michael Scott. Without Michael would be eight. Eight. Okay, I'm like a third of the way through that. Gotcha. You're you're actually further than I've ever been. I was gonna say it's a chore right now. I I, I finished season seven, and I may I think I saw the first episode of eight, and then I don't remember going much further. Well, I'll I did see know. the series finale. I'm committing. I'm going through the whole thing. All right. I, Go ahead. Um. Go ahead. All right. Um, did you did you ever end up seeing Code Eight? I did. Okay. Um, what'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> How good is that Electra? He's strong. He doesn't know how strong yet. Light it. I need time to work him. How do you want to live in this life? Let's go. Hide our powers. Everybody on the ground. If you see something that you want. Take it. I've been tracking this one electric across multiple crimes. Targets are online. Execute. Um, so star rating off the top. Uh, you know, it's a tough one. I, I, I'm going to have to say three, I guess. Mm-hmm. But but r- really probably more like two and a half. Okay. Um, I, I didn't care for it. I, w- I was ultimately kind of bored by it. Um what what's your star rating before we jump in? I gave it three and a half. Um, okay, but that's a you know that's generous. Um, sure, sure. I, I thought it was well executed enough to keep me like engaged in you know what was going on. Um, sure, but I don't know thematically it was kind of close to X Men. I kept thinking like I'd rather be watching X Men if we're going to talk about how people with powers can't get jobs or feel ostracized by society. I mean, it's yeah. it's cool to explore that, um, uh, but it doesn't feel new to me because all these themes have been done on film before. Right. And so to, to that point, like you're right, it's been done over and over. What The, the Incredibles most recently, you know, did the whole right. powers, you know, and, and they're in hiding because it's kind of illegal and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it, it's been done a million times, but let me back up and just for the sake of the audience. So the, the film is about um, a, a character named Connor who is played by Robbie Amell. Um, he is 
unemployed. His mother is sick and getting worse. And her job is at cutting it in terms of paying the bills. Um, and they both have powers, um, but are, you know, living kind of with that part of themselves hidden. Um, then an opportunity comes up and Robbie Amell has the opportunity to make some money, a, a substantial amount of Lots money. Lots of money. Um, and, and, and this would be using his powers with a group of, you know, I don't know, outlaws who are going to, you know, do some, some things like robbing banks and stealing, you know, chemicals and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and so, so essentially it, it turns from like weird superhero X-Men thing to, uh, to like a heist movie. And then, and then to like a thriller that's like, I guess we're trying to be like the town, but with powers and, um, yeah, I, I, I think I think I think you're right. Like ultimately, it's been done before. It doesn't it doesn't hit any new any new things. But it's done it's done competently. Like like the direction's fine. It's not super stylish or um, like unique. It just kind of does what it's supposed to do, and it does it well. And the visual effects are fine. Um, really, really, the reason I wanted to watch this was because of like the behind the scenes making of this thing. Um, so the film was directed by Jeff Chan, who also came up with the story. Um, Jeff Chan, um, made a short film first, which also starred Robbie and Stephen Amell. And, um, and they did this short little 15 minute, whatever film. And, um, and then they decided to crowdfund the, the budget I think they were asking $200,000 to make this film. And they ended up making like, I don't know, I think it was, I think it was like, several million on, on crowdfunding. And so, so anyway, they, they made a substantial amount above what they were hoping to make. And, um, and so they made this feature and, you know, uh, I, I think put some, some good production behind it. Um, I think ultimately it's just the story that was kind of weak. I don't think the characters, I, I think that's, that's my main gripe is like the characters in X-Men, um, are memorable and likable and they are like, you know, they, they stick with you. They're, they're very unique and, and unique one to another, right? Like, like Logan is very different than Nightcrawler. Who's very different than storm. Who's very different than Cyclops. And that they all have like very distinct personalities. And, and here it felt like the, the characters kind of never evolved beyond what our, uh, beyond where they were introduced, right? Like, like they, there's not much in the, in the way of arc and, and what little there is, we also never get to know the characters more than that. So it's like, Oh, Robbie Amell down on his luck, hidden, hiding his powers, dad, dead mom dying. Like that's all you ever know about him. You, you don't, like it, it, there's never like a, a moment where it's like, oh, I'm going to learn something new about him. It's just kind of like you learn it and that's that's what we're going to run with. And I think that kind of um, I think that kind of is a hindrance uh, for me. So so, you know, I think that's where I come down on it is just character wise. I just didn't really care for the characters and the actors do a fine job, but I, I just didn't care for the characters. I would agree with that. I think that the characters are, you know, pretty generic. Um, yeah. you know, earnest guy wants something, you know, wants better life, wants to save his mom, you know, yeah. um, he, he takes a walk on the wild side to do it, you know, regrets it, but gotta keep doing it. And yeah, it is, it is pretty generic. I mean, there it's, it's, again, it's one of those movies that's kind of defined more by what it doesn't do than what it does do. Um, you know, there's. St there's um, choices they make in the climax that are not like, you know, big superhero movies. Mm -hmm. but I don't think that this film could have executed. It, yeah. it, nor does it call for big superhero movie decisions. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I. Uh, so there's uh, there's a again there's 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 it's it's one of those, it's it's a when a movie is just okay you ask yourself is this a good movie with flaws or is it a bad movie with moments mm. and i'd say this is a bad movie with moments okay um yeah you know I, I, I hate to i hate to look at it so black and white like that in a way but sure but i would i would if i had to go one way or the other with it it's like yeah i'd, I'd 
I, I think I'd say it's a it's a movie with great potential that never never hits it. Um, it it's so it's so um, interesting to me. Like like I I was thinking, okay, so what would I have done differently? Like what would have what would have kept me hooked on these characters and invested in them as characters? Um, because because I think like okay, sick mom, I've got to do this for my mom. That that's that's all well and good. I understand that. I'm behind it. But at a point, like the character has to make a moral decision beyond I need the money. Right. And so and so I think if like further down the road, generic as this may be, but but further down the road to say, oh, I actually really like doing this. Like if he had a moment of realization like, oh, I've I've hidden this for too long and I really like showcasing this ability and I really love the power and I really love the, the surge of adrenaline and I really love this lifestyle. Like then I'm learning something new about the character further along in the film. And, and then now he's presented with another moral uh, choice, which is, which goes beyond, do I do what I have to do to make money for my mom? And now it's, I said I was making money for my mom, but really I kind of like this life. Yeah. And now I have to make a choice. So am I doing it for my mom or am I doing it for me? Yeah. And then there's like that moment of like, do I keep this and hoard it or do I give this to my mom or whatever? And there, you know, I feel like they're, it's like, it's missing that moment. Like I thought we were going to get it right. So there's a moment in the film. Um, and, and I'll, I'll speak broadly, so no spoilers here. There's a moment in the film where I thought very specifically like, oh, this is going to be the moment where like there, there's like a flip that, I mean, a switch that's flipped right where it's, oh, like I, I'm going to now do this for a new reason, or I'm going to now do this for, for me or whatever. And, and, and it's immediately undercut by the same issue we had in the beginning, right? The whole mom is sick and, and that it's like, it never evolves beyond that. And I, and I found that a little frustrating, but, um, and then, and then I think like there were characters that were underdeveloped, right? So uh, maybe they were all underdeveloped, but, but specifically like the cop characters, um, the, the two police officers that we see in the film, um, predominantly like good cop and bad cop, um, we'll call them, um, never really evolved beyond that. Um, and there's never like another layer added to it, um, except for good cop has another layer added, but it never really factors into the story. And then, and then, you know what I mean? Like, I, it just felt like a ton of things were, were happening that never got, like never reached their potential. So I almost feel like this is a rare case of like, you need another 20 minutes of this movie and, and let me get to know the characters a little better. And, um, and it would have been a lot better. Um, but I, I, I do have to say, like, I, I'd be willing to give it a three because I, I'm really in support of actors, in this case, Robbie and Stephen Amell, who who championed a, a short film and made it into a feature and, and put their, you know, their names on the line here for this thing. And, and I really have to give, a, a, you know, big respect to people who do that. Um who make art because they want to be making art. And, and, and I feel I, that's the impression I got here. Like they wanted this movie to be made. And so I, I, I did kind of feel that passion behind it. So, so yeah, I, I'd be willing to say three stars on it. Yeah, that's probably fair. I mean, I hate to like, pigeonhole like this, but it's another Netflix film. That's just yeah. middle of the road to me. Yep. Yep. Um, and I, yep. because to me, like this story was done, it's not this exact story, but th- this particular itch was scratched mm. better by Chronicle to me. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Have you, have you still haven't seen that, right? I still haven't seen it, man. You should check that out. I'd, I'd love to know your thoughts about Chronicle. And it has Michael B. Jordan in it, right? It has Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. That's the whole thing. I'm, I'm like, I have to see this for Michael B. Jordan because he's, he's my man. Yeah. And, and like, I never, never have seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I, did you want to talk about some of the, this film news that's been going yeah, on? Yeah. B- before I do that, just, just because I teased it, I wasn't planning on doing this, but just because I teased sure. it a minute ago. Um, let me, let me talk about Hey Arnold, the jungle movie. Everyone's favorite football head is back. Oh, no. 
This is incredible. Everyone's here. Same lovable gang. You're a bold kid on... Oh, out of my way, hair boy! Jeez! On a whole new adventure. Bye, everyone. Come on, Hebner. Don't catch any tropical diseases like malaria, diphtheria, or cholera. Oh. Um, okay. And and so, um, Hey Arnold Jungle Movie came out a couple years ago. I Did think you watch this on 20, Netflix? 2017. It is on Netflix. Um, and I, I remember when it came out, I think it was 2017. Um, I was kind of excited, like, oh, a, a new Hey Arnold thing. Like, they're letting um, Craig Bartlett, who created the show, come back and do this thing. And, and it, it was like this long. Uh, gestating project um, and, and the history behind it is um, in, in the shortest of strokes here, um, there were two Hey Arnold movies being made at, at the same time in the 90s um, or late 90s early 2000s, whenever it was um, two, two movies being made, one was going to be a TV movie and one was going to be a theatrical movie, mm. um, this one the Jungle movie was the theatrical movie um, and then at the last minute, for whatever reason, Nickelodeon like changed their minds and released the other one that was made for TV in theaters. Um, and so it, it did OK, um, but it kind of wasn't great. And then they said, OK, so, you know, maybe we'll do like that other movie, the jungle movie as a TV movie. And so Craig Bartlett was like, okay, well I need to do like this two part or prologue in order to get us to the, the spot where we can do the jungle movie. And so they gave him the two part prologue, um, for it. And the, the ratings were kind of low. Now I remember watching this when it aired, um, this two part prologue was, I think it was called, uh, the journal and the journal was Arnold finds a journal that his parents had written. And, you know, it's all about their adventures in like, uh, I don't know, South America. South America who knows. I think it was. Yeah. And so, uh, like I think it was like San Lorenzo, some fictional place. Anyway, the point is like they, um, they, they, made this, they wrote this journal or whatever and Arnold found it and blah, blah, blah. And I remember watching it when it came out and it ends on this note of like Arnold finds like a clue to, that they might be alive and where they might be. And like, he runs back in the boarding house, grandpa, grandpa, I found this thing. And then like cut to black. And that was the last episode of Hey Arnold ever produced. Um, so, so no, no conclusion to that ever. Um, and so Hey Arnold, the jungle movie was supposed to be that conclusion, but because that made, that was like, didn't do so well in the ratings. They just canceled it, shelved it, blah, blah, blah. So now, all these years later, we get Hey Arnold, the Jungle Movie, which, again, sort of a passion project for Craig Bartlett to finally finish the show that he started all those years ago. Um, so immediately, like, I'm on his side. Like, I want you to finish this story that you were intending to tell. Um, but at the end of the day, Hey Arnold, the Jungle Movie is is equally, like, good and frustrating. So I, I was a huge Hey Arnold fan when I was a kid, um, you know, to me, it was kind of like the modern, like Charlie Brown and Snoopy. It was like, look at all these like eccentric characters that live in this world. And in this case, New York. And, you know, um, it was, you know, all from a kid's point of view and he's got like kooky grandparents and blah, blah, blah. And it's all just super fun. Um, and the movie is that for a about the first act. Um, we get to see him in school. It's the last day of school. We get to see him um, in the boarding house with all of our, you know, familiar faces and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the plot is he, uh, Arnold and his class win a trip to San Lorenzo to, um, I don't know, do something educational. Who knows? Anyway, the point is, um, uh, they, they win New this York trip to public school system, sending kids to South America. I know. Right. Holy crap. And, well, it's not the public school system. It's like something, and they were like, "Oh, whoever's like a humanitarian and who help, whoever, whatever kid helps their city the most, uh, okay. like we'll give it to them or whatever." Weird. And and so like the kids, I was gonna say we couldn't even go to Biloxi for my school, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, yeah, my school they they always did a an eighth grade field trip to like Washington D.C. and then when it was my year, they were like, "Eh." And I was like, oh, great. And so, um, so anyway, whatever. But the point is, uh, I don't hold a grudge. Um, I do, but I don't, but the, the point is like, so, so this film, like it starts really cool because, um, Gerald and the other kids see like, okay, first of all, Arnold needs to go to San Lorenzo cause that's where his parents are. And B he's just the most worthy kid of this because look how much he's helped everybody. And they actually have like footage that has been shot by the kids, you know, throughout the, 
to years, I guess. And they um, show this in like this big videotape, why Arnold should win this thing. And it shows like moments from the original series. Like, look, he helped you know, stoop kid, leave the stoop. And they do like a modern <laughs> interview with stoop kid. And he's like, yeah, I'd be afraid to leave my stoop if it wasn't for Arnold. Wow. And like, no, whatever, all that stuff. It's a lot of cool callbacks and it's fun. And, uh, and it kind of highlights what was so great about that original series. Um, and, um, and then it becomes like this Indiana Jones esque, uh, thing in South America where they're looking for his parents. Um, and that's the part that never really catches for me. It, it was, um, I, like I could see maybe if I was a kid still, I would have liked it, but it, it lost to me what was so great about the show, which is as exaggerated as it all was, it was still a kid in New York and it was very real um, in a way that like, you know, SpongeBob and Fairly Odd Parents were magical and, and weird and cartoonish. This almost could have been a live action show. Right. Like it, it was kind of real. And, and so like taking it and, and ripping it from New York and putting it in the jungle and having them like run from, you know, booby traps and all this stuff, it just, it kind of lost what yeah. Arnold was to me. Um, all that to say, like, if you are like me and for whatever reason by now, haven't even seen this movie, um, or are just in quarantine looking for something to do, it's not a waste of your time because, you know, uh, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's new. Hey Arnold stuff. And that's kind of cool. Um, but I'm just going to give it three stars. It's fine. Um, it, it doesn't piss me off, but it also never reaches beyond the, the heights of the original show. Um, it's kind of one of those like middling episodes that's like, eh, it's okay. Um, but it's not like the stoop kids afraid to leave his stoop episodes. Like th those are the great upper echelon episodes. Mm. Um, but what I will say, um, and, and this will be the last thing is I want to point out um, very quickly the voice cast in this. So it, a, a lot of them come back. Right. So like um, the original voice of Helga, um, Dan Castellaneta, of course, and Tress McNeil as his grandparents. Like these these are the same. Um, but um, a lot of the kids had to be recast. Yeah. And so um, what I will say, like Arnold this kid that plays Arnold is flawless. And there were like three original Arnolds in the original series, right. and, you know, so it, it's fine. And this kid is Arnold, but I, I have to give it to you. His name is Benjamin Flores jr. Who plays Gerald does a spot freaking on Gerald. And, and, you know, I absolutely loved what he did. Um, and, and there's a few characters like that, that just do, I don't know where they found new kids who could imitate the old kids so perfectly. Yeah. Um, and, and it's really impressive. And so anyway, all that to say, like, it's fine. And, and if you're looking for a dose of nostalgia or you're looking for, you know, just something to put on during the quarantine, here you go. But, uh, if you're not bored, don't put it on. I remember seeing a uh, like a commercial way back, you know, when Hey Arnold, hey Arnold was in production back on Nickelodeon, and it was it was brief glimpses of Craig Bartlett and all the kids in the in the voice studio mm, showing them yeah. like you know, and they just had them all in the room together, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's just saying like, all right, now you say this, and then you're gonna reply with this, and it, it just it seemed really fun, yeah, and that 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 came through on the screen all the time. Absolutely. I, I, again, I, I loved Hey Arnold and, and this, this hit a couple of those nostalgic itches, but it, it never really reached the heights that I wanted it to. Uh, did you want to talk about the Star Wars story since it's Star Wars day? Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. So Taika Waititi is directing a Star Wars movie. Is it the next Star Wars movie or is it it's a Star Wars movie. It's just a Star Wars movie. <laughs> oh, we know we know that there's a, a date. I think it's December something of 2022 okay. that they had originally carved out for a new Star Wars film. But you know, a the the shakeup of uh, coronavirus. Uh, who knows if that date's even still good? Yeah. And and B, I think that was originally slated for the Game of Thrones guys Star Wars movie that isn't happening anymore. So, um. I my gut reaction when when you shared the story with uh, with our text thread, <clears throat> the Acme All Stars, um, yes. the my my reaction was it was perfectly neutral. It was oh cool, I like Taiko Atiti. He he was 
you know, he was he he's the better part of a lot of things I'm into. Like he obviously Thor Ragnarok and what we do in the shadows and um mm-hmm. you know, I um but um and you know, of course the Mandalorian with with uh with the um God, what the hell is the robot's name? Um IG something. IG IG 11 I think. Okay. Um, but that, that's him acting, you know. <laughs> yeah, But yeah. I think he directed a couple of those episodes. Um, yeah, at least the finale. In fact, there's a thing on Disney Plus now. I can't remember what it's called, but they pretty much have like a, a like a director's roundtable for The Mandalorian. I'm going to check it out. I saw, I saw, yeah, it launched today, I think. I saw like a, at a table, Taika Waititi and John Favreau and Dave Filoni and uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. I want to check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Uh, so, so he's involved in Star Wars and what he's done with Star Wars, uh, people have received it well. And, um, you know, he's, he's kind of on a hot streak right now with mainstream properties. So, uh, my first reaction is good for him. Yep. Um, my reaction as a potential viewer is okay. Well, if, if anything is going to get me to see the film, it's that, yep. um, and then the rest of me is like, but I still don't want to see it. <laughs> right. Um, I still don't care. Um, yep. So I, I feel perfectly, uh, perfectly nonplussed. <laughs> I, I sent that to you guys with no plus. caption. Yeah, <laughs> no, on Disney Plus. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I sent that without a caption because I'm just like, eh. I, yeah. I mean, th- this is a fact. Like I sent it very matter of fact, like this is a thing that's happening yeah. Um, because yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Good for him. I'm glad he's getting work yeah. and I'm glad he's it's getting same paid. Same thing with John Favreau is like, good for him. He deserves it. I'm yeah. not sure this is something I want to see. Yeah. I'd rather see original stuff from you or like, I think he's a great fit for the Marvel universe or at least a corner of it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just don't see star Wars as being something that he can be fully Taika in. Unless they're so, about to take the universe into into those areas where they're going to start splitting it into other genres, just like Marvel does, which well, seems like it's the plan. Because if you're Disney and you're looking at, we have a universe, we want it to be successful. We, yeah. You know, what do we want to do? Well, what did Marvel do? Marvel was a, Marvel was able to transcend genre and tell a bunch of stories in the same universe with different tones. And yep. they're going to go, well, damn it. That's what we're going to do with Star Wars. And we're going to yep. hire the same people <laughs> to get it done. Before yeah, yeah. you know it, they're going to have James Gunn making a Star Wars movie. And, yep. uh, you know, uh, Shane Black <laughs> making a Star Wars movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, who else? Uh, Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon. You know, for, for for the record, I would I would love to see – I love all those filmmakers. So, of course, I'd love yeah. to see a, a Star Wars movie if they made it. But I, I still don't want to see a Star Wars movie yeah, that yeah. anybody Let, made. <laughs> let's add a caveat. I would love to see a movie that they make. If yes. it happens to be Star Wars, great. But I'd rather it not be Star Wars. I'd rather it not be Star Wars. I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd rather, boy, I could think of so many like unpleasant moments <laughs> in history. I'd, just, I'd rather see a film about, you know. S- speaking of Star Wars, dude, so so today's May the 4th, right? Yes. Um, and, and my, so my, my lovely wife was allowing me to vent earlier. Um, and, uh, I, I was like, I was so upset because I was like, I hate star Wars. And, and, and she just like completely nonplussed, like doesn't even care. And I was like, let me tell you why. And like, like I mentioned this, I went on this whole tirade about like, it makes no sense that they say the emperor, Palpatine and Rise of Skywalker is a clone. That makes no sense because how could he be a clone? Because when did he clone himself and who cloned him and who brought the clone body to life? And why is the clone body still having the scars of the non-cloned body? And this makes no sense. And like I was going on this tirade and I'm like, I think what it boils down to for me for Star Wars, and I've probably said it on this show, but it's like every time I think this, I have it's like a new thought. Yeah. Is <laughs> is I really am so like mad at how successful star Wars is <laughs> and it's so ridiculously stupid. I know. And, 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 and it's not all, it hasn't always been that way. No, it's like the ultimate example of a failing upwards and B right. and B like not ever even getting close to tapping your potential. It is like, it, it is, it is the ultimate in, in just kind of like, bottom of the barrel storytelling in a, in a world whose concept is eh, pretty good. So it, it, it just bothers me so much. There's a lot of examples in life of things that other people like, and you think are just super generic and not just you, yeah. lots of people go, 
Yeah. That's okay. You know, like whether it's like a basketball player or like one particular movie or yeah. like, you know, Splash Mountain or something like ever, yeah. you know, you, you do it and then you go, I don't see what the big deal is. And Star Wars is one of like the largest in scale examples mm-hmm. of that because on a yeah. global scale, people are obsessed with it. Yet yeah. most people I talk to are not that passionate about Star Wars. Yep. I don't – granted, I don't talk to many people about Star Wars. I know cause, some. Because I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I know. Once they start talking about it, they never stop. I mean because I have enough uh, – you know me, Dustin. Like I, I'm not interested in Star Wars. But if someone is going to come up to me and say um, – if they want to – they're going to ask my opinion about a movie, I'm going to get it about as detailed as any of these Star Wars nerds is going to get – yeah. Not because I like Star Wars, but because I like story and I like stories to make to make character sense. So if you're yeah. going to, you know, people ask me, hey, what would you think of Rogue One? And I'm sitting here because because in most people's minds that, you know, and it's people who are talking to me about Rogue One, it's like, oh, Rogue One's like, you know, like a filmy, a filmer, filmy kind of movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I say that like, yeah. oh, it's, oh yeah. it, it has like artistic Ooh, merit, so right? Cool so, and mature so maybe Connor and, likes yeah. that. And it's like, yeah. It, it's it's okay. I mean, like, it, I, th- that's what made me want to see it. But there's so much wrong with it on a story level and on a character level that I yeah. ultimately don't care for it. And then people just like throw up their hands. It's it's it reminds me of the Giant Mechanical Man. I didn't mention this, but but the script in the Giant Mechanical Man is filled with a lot of moments where like uh, the, the the supporting characters are unreasonably like pissed off at Jenna Fisher or Chris Messina, like. A minor thing happens like, God, you just you do this all the time. You you really need to get your life together. And they go through the whole like rigmarole of the thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sitting here as a viewer like, holy shit, like relax. Like right, nothing right. happened. But yeah. And, and I thought for a minute, like maybe the the our, the film is like it's doing that on purpose to, to accentuate the, those external expectations on these characters. Yeah. Um, whether it did a good job of that or not, or whether that was intentional, I, I sit there and I feel that way whenever I critique Star Wars, because I feel like I say something fairly reasonable, which is, Hey, in my opinion, I just didn't care for it because I value this, this, and this, and the movie doesn't do that. And people are go, Oh God, never mind. You know, right. <laughs> like, right, 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 right. Did, I, did I say something you didn't like about Star Wars? Some, Dude, when something. that happens to me, when that happens to me, like I, there'll be inevitably somebody that says at work, Hey, what did you think about rise of Skywalker? And, and so what I would say is I, I liked it. I thought it could have been, I thought it probably could have been better. And, and nine out of 10 times, no matter how big of a star Wars purist they are. Yeah. Cause a lot of times these guys won't say anything bad. They mm-hmm. will not say anything bad about it. Yep. But, but even that they, they'll be like, okay, yeah, I can, I can agree with that. Sure. And even though it's a little bit of an overstatement for me to be like, it was good. Because it really wasn't. Right. It's like it's like you know what? That's just going to get you off my back. But obviously, it's good. Right. Could have been better. And then they're like, eh, yeah, I could see that. I'm going to tell and then you. They, they can, yeah. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear, just enough so that you don't ask me any follow up questions. But I'm also going to pepper in that could have been better yeah. to shield myself from making you think I'm really willing yeah. to have a, an I'm, intense yeah. conversation I'm, about I'm, how great it I'm was. future proofing you asking me about Star Wars in the future while simultaneously yep. ending this conversation as soon as possible. Yep. The, the worst <laughs> one. I, I, yes. Right before uh, Rise of Skywalker came out, I had a guy be like, um, so what did you think about uh, The Last Jedi? Like, what, 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 which side of the camp are you on? The camp. And I was like. Uh, See that question makes like, me want to go. I don't. I don't like camping. I'm not there at all. I, <laughs> right, I'm, right, I'm right. Nowhere. I'm in a hotel up the street, yeah, man. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, blimp. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm way above you guys. No, I, uh, I. I was just like, yeah. I. I. I wasn't a huge fan of it. And then he's like, why? <laughs> Like, like offended. And I'm like, Oh Lord, no. Oh, I don't want this conversation <laughs> because I can't say anything because yeah. if I'm like, well, I just wasn't, agree- I didn't agree with what they did with Luke Skywalker. Well, why you didn't understand that, that, that what they were going for with uh-huh. Luke Skywalker was, and then it becomes this big thing. And I'm like, Oh gosh. I, my oh, answer Lord. normally is just, I just don't care. Like if people ask like, Hey, would you like it or not? And it's just like, my, my answer is, is just, has just come down to like, I don't care. To go, I think you didn't think it's like, gonna start saying, "I like the idea of it." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, exactly. It's just like I wanted to like it. It's just yeah. there. It's just like that tells people, like, "Hey, I'm not like a, I'm not a fundamentalist about Star Wars." It's just I'm, I'm sick of hearing about it and watching it. Like, did you? Yeah. Did you like? Did you like what they did with Luke? 
I mean, I don't care. Why don't you care? Well, because they didn't do what they should have done with this character, but what they did with this character isn't a big deal because it's made up. <laughs> that's that's my right, answer. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, I, or I'm just going to flip the script like, hey, did you like uh, The Last Jedi? And I'll be like, I really like The Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. It, there you go. Yeah. Take control <laughs> right. of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's great? Citizen Kane. Baby Yoda. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Baby Driver. <laughs> <laughs> baby Driver. Adam Driver. It's all full, full circle. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, but, that, but that's where I am with Taika Waititi, right? Like, yeah. fine, good for you, but I, I'd rather you do something different. Um, I have like five minutes. Did you, did you want to bring something else up? Uh, so in that case, I'll shelve the more discussiony one for next time. Okay. Um, but I will, I will bring this up cause I think it's pertinent to our podcast. Um, so I guess this was a few days ago. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone did an Instagram live, um, because that's a thing now. And, uh, and he seemed to make a remark that they are working on a sequel to Demolition Man. I saw this before we came on, and of course, every story is like, confirms Demolition Man 2. But I I saw that, and I was like, the first the first thing I thought of was, the first person I thought of was Cynthia, and then the second mm-hmm. person I thought of was you, and I was like, all right, yep. th- we must see this film. <laughs> so, so this is the quote. Stallone says, I think it's coming. We're working on it right now with Warner Brothers and it's looking fantastic. So that should come out. That's going to happen. <laughs> so I mean, he says it with such certainty, like it's going to happen. But the thing happen. is, now that he said it, it's happening. It will happen. S- that somebody St- out there is like, OK, Stallone will make it happen. He will make it happen. That man makes things happen. He does. He does. I don't I know how they're going to do it. I mean, look, look, I mean, can can he can he physically do another film? Yes, he can. Um, sure. I honestly would just like Simon Phoenix to come back and be the villain again. Um, right, right, <laughs> I don't right. know how you uh, look. OK, as a fan of Demolition Man, of course, I'd love to see a sequel as an objective uh, viewer of this of the material. It's completely unnecessary. <laughs> and um, and what was great about the first one will not apply at all here. I think um, at the same time, you could have said all those things about the original film. This is completely unnecessary. This doesn't make any sense. Uh, and yet um, it, it has its fan base because it's it's just f- a fun movie. You know, there's going to be an actual cameo by President Schwarzenegger, though. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's going to happen. Exactly. It's going to happen. Yeah. Um, It'd be cool to get Sandra Bullock to come back. And uh, I mean, think about that, that cast. Like, you get um, Dennis Leary and Jack Black to come back. Um, I, I just want to see, like, Michael B. Jordan as uh, as Wesley Snipes' like, son or something. It makes no sense, but sure. I would like to see, like, a multiverse thing happen with John Ooh, Smith. Okay. Now, now, it had nothing to do with time travel. It was all, like, cryogenic. But what if it was? And so you go through these, you know, I don't know. See, I just thought of a way better idea. You know what I'd love to see a sequel to? What's that? The One, starring Jet Li. Oh, okay. I never saw that. No. Man, I got to find out where that is. The One is so good. I'm going to look it up right now. (laughs) The One was was a a, a movie. It was a 2001 film starring Jet Li. And the concept was there's 127 parallel universes out there. Um, And so there's 127 U's. Like, there's... A bunch of people that look just like you, Dustin, the same age, everything, but they have slightly different names. They have slightly different hairstyles. They live on d- different universes. So everything's slightly different. But okay. if one of you, if, if, um, if you figure out a way, but, but the multiverse is policed. So you okay. can travel through, par- but travel is restricted between parallel universes. But, um, somebody figures out, Jet Li figures out, you know, the, the, his, the, a Jet Li character named Yulaw figures out that if you go to parallel universes and you murder your doppelganger, the life force gets distributed through the remaining doppelgangers. So you eat all, you get a little stronger. So you keep going to multiverses, you keep murdering yourself. And so the remaining people get stronger and stronger, like this big pyramid until the, the idea is that like, you know, once you, once it's just you, you become the one, you're like a God and you can just rule the multiverse. So that's the okay. goal of you law. And in his standing in his way is Gabe Law, just nice, gently, like, oh, I've got a nice, 
nice life, nice. I'm married to Carla Gugino, and everything's fine, and and I'm a good cop, and and I've been getting stronger for the past few months. I don't know why. Oh well, I who who cares? And then you figure out what it is, and so you have Jet Li fighting Jet Li for a movie, and one of them's <laughs> evil, and one of them's good, and it's 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 amazing. And the movie, that sounds great. The movie ending with like just with a character screaming, "I'm nobody's bitch." Come on. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's legitimately good, but also That's two, awesome. it also 2000s good. Mhm. You need to see the one. I I uh, I decree it so. <laughs> yes. It's sweet. It's great. I used to have it on DVD. It's it's gone now okay. somewhere. Um Nice. Yeah, the one is great. Okay. All right. The, the got one it. Is great. I, I remember that the, the DVD cover, like I either saw it at Blockbuster or Best Buy yeah. or something a million times. You've got, um, you have movie stop. Er, early still trying to grow hair. Jason Statham <laughs> playing second <laughs> before he gave up playing second banana to Delroy Lindo. Okay. Um, but yeah, Carly Gugino, a bunch of other character actors you recognize and, um, some really cool, you know, around that area of cinema, there was bullet, a lot of bullet time esque stuff. So some really mm-hmm. cool things with like, you know, with superhuman reflexes and, you know, some cool bullet time stuff happening. And, um, you know, yeah. it's, you know, it's fun. I like the one. Sweet. Um, okay. Okay, well that's it. Uh, let's 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 close it out. I <laughs> just wanted it. to just wanted to uh, bring that up to you. Yeah, man. Um, okay, cool. That's the show. That's it. If you did like the Sweet. show, um, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or watch us at youtube.com slash Hoopercast. Um, I'm only saying these things because they, they matter somehow. Write us a review. Somebody did, and that was nice to see. Um, oh, sure. Follow uh, the social media pages. There's an Instagram um, and uh, hang out with us. Be part of our circle of friends here share movies with us be part of our conversation this what's it's all about me and dustin talking about movies and you guys yeah. taking part in it so there are ways to get us your ideas the, there's the email address there's you know the my letterbox page i guess but you can if you have thoughts you can give us thoughts and you know um every now and then we go on reddit and talk about movie topics just out of the blue and it's it's always more fun to be asked those questions directly um yep Yep. which used to happen more often. It doesn't as much now, but um, uh, yeah, anyways, so there's a lot of ways to watch uh, or digest the show. It just comes down to what your preference is, man. So yep. yes. All right. That's it. See you everybody. Sweet. Bye. Bye.